I just absolutely love that underwater video of walleye. So I actually went out on the Columbia River near my house here and drifted for over an hour uh, just recording walleye on three different drifts at different depths from 20 to about 60 feet and got, like I said, 60 plus minutes of recording time. And in that time, I recorded 66 walleye on film. And so the camera I use uh, for a lot of people who ask is this Markham Pursuit HD right here. So it has about a 55 foot long cable. Um, so I am limited on how deep I can go. This is really what my specialty is in terms of my education is that I am an ecological statistician and I take real world experience and video like I got here and convert it into something that we can look at graphically and mathematically and statistically to see if there's any patterns. So let's get started with that. So like I said, I did about 60 minutes of drift and filming uh, on the Columbia River. And one of the first things we really need to look at in terms of habitat selection or looking for habitat preferences is we have to look at how much effort I made in each different habitat type. And so what I ended up doing is I broke up the habitat into four different categories. And the first was what I would consider just cobble or hard rock. That is where 90% of the bottom was either just bouldery or solid bedrock. It had a lot of moss coverage. Um, that was one of the least common habitat types I came across. I didn't specifically target different habitat types. I just went on different drifts and whatever habitats were there I filmed. Um, since I don't really have a detailed map of what, what the bottom structure of the Columbia River is. So you can see that I spent a little bit less than 15% of that total time uh, filming on cobble. So cobble sand mix I classified as anything where there was less than 90% uh, cobble or solid bedrock down all the way to 30%. So it could be 70% sand, 30% cobble, and I was still considered a cobble sand mix. Still a fairly strong cobble component, I guess is what I'm going with here. And that was one of the more common habitat types up to around 25, 30 percent. And then scattered cobble was basically where that's just predominantly sand and there's only 10 to 30 percent visible coverage of cobble in the video. And then pure sand, I basically just considered anything that was primarily sand with less than 10 percent cobble coverage. So not a lot of boulders uh, visible, mostly just sand dominant. And of course, this gives me a capture of of what my survey effort was in terms of the amount of time I spent in these different habitat types. So if we were to take these percentages and look at the expected distribution of those 66 walleye that I saw, then we should expect to see about nine walleye in cobble, 17 walleye in cobble sand mix, 26 walleye in scattered cobble, and 15 of those walleye in sand. That is if the distribution of walleye is uniform relative to my survey effort, uh, and there's no biases for walleye selecting for different habitat types, that's, that's what that distribution of those 66 walleye I saw should have been. Of course, most of us anglers don't expect that to be the case because we know that fish um, like walleye have specific habitats they like. And so let's look at what the expected versus the actual was. And you can see here in the actual in, in yellow is that uh, there's very strong selection for scattered cobble. So while I really like this area where it's predominantly sand with just a little bit of cobble or boulders out there that they can hunker down behind. Uh, you'll see this time and time again in the video where you know, there's a few scattered boulders always visible and there's these walleye tucked up right uh, in behind them. There's, I found no walleye in the solid cobble or bedrock areas. They're really avoiding those really hard bottoms. They, they, I never saw a single fish in those hard bottoms. I didn't see walleye. 
I didn't see the suckers, whitefish, pike minnows, nothing. It was like totally devoid of fish. So if you're like in a snaggy, rocky area, this tells me it's not really a productive area to be fishing for walleye. Um, Cause where I'm finding walleye is in these really scattered cobble areas. Even in the cobble sand mix, where you still have a fairly strong rocky component, the five walleye I saw there is far below the expected 17 I would expect to see there if they had a uniform distribution. Whereas you look at that scattered cobble, I had 50 walleye of that 66 in the scattered cobble and I had 11 of them in the sand, which is still less than expected, but still a much higher number than any other habitat aside from scattered cobble. And what was interesting about the walleye that I saw in the sand is that those fish tended to be on the move, cruising up off the bottom. I felt like these were fish that were out uh, hunting. Whereas the fish that I encountered in the scattered cobble, some were on the move, probably hunting, looking for, for prey. But others, a lot of them appeared simply just to be resting on the bottom, often tucked up behind those few scattered boulders. So it's really interesting to see this strong habitat preference for this scattered cobble. So if you're out there uh, and looking for walleye and you're jigging, and you can feel the bottom a lot of times through your gear, if you're really hitting a lot of hard rock and cobble, maybe try and move somewhere else where there's a little bit of a softer bottom with intermittent contact with boulders. It lets you know that you're more in that typical scattered cobble habitat that these walleye seem to prefer. Interestingly, uh, you know, I filmed this video in the spring. I've done other similar content where I filmed in the fall and in the summer, and these are all consistent in that these are the same areas I'm encountering walleye year round. So they do seem to have a preference for this scattered cobble sand mix uh, year round. It doesn't seem to be seasonal. Now I will note that in this video, most of these fish appear to be sort of in that 15 to 18 inch size range. So these aren't the really giant fish and there might be some separation here in terms of habitat selection by different age classes of fish because all of the fish I seen in this video were in a similar age class. Uh, so I really was missing the really small fish and the really large fish. Uh, one thing I will note is that I tend to encounter a lot more smaller fish much deeper in 60 to 100 feet of water, but I simply don't have a camera system that is good enough uh, that has a long enough cable to get me down into those deep waters yet. Anyways, really interesting video and a really educational one for me. So if you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comments section below, or I'd love to hear your comments too on some of this video uh, of things that you noted about the walleye, their behavior and the habitat. I'd love to hear your feedback as well. All right, I'll include links to that camera because everybody always asks about the Markham Pursuit HD. It's one of my favorite walleye fishing tools because uh, oftentimes I'll drift through an area and not get a bite. I drop the cameras down there to see, is it that the fish aren't there or is it that they are there and just off the feed. It's always good to know. And uh, it's a really good investment and it will help improve your uh, walleye fishing, especially if you fish for walleye in less than 60 feet of water. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder.